at Mercury, we put everything we have into our engines, and we take every ounce we can out of them. So when we set out to build a completely new engine, we looked at every nut, bolt, screw, shaft, gear, and cowling, and then we started innovating. New engineering, top secret alloys, and ended up creating the lightest line of engines in their class, so you can get way, way more out of way, way less. Introducing the all-new V6 Mercury four-strokes. Lighter, quicker, more efficient. Mercury, go boldly. Let us make this absolutely clear. The days of wasted casts and missed opportunities are over. New Mega Imaging takes fishing into the megahertz range for the first time. Because higher frequency sonar means higher frequency of this. Without a doubt, it's the most detailed picture of the world below ever. And it's only from Humminbird. Yamaha announces the development of a next-generation outboard. It's safe to assume that means lighter, quicker, stronger and smarter. And with the announcement of the all-new Yamaha F90 four-stroke outboard, it's clear that Yamaha engineers have been able to deliver above and beyond the greatest of expectations. The new F90 is the most powerful engine in Yamaha's mid-range category with design inspiration taken from the industry-leading F70 and big capacity power, componentry and engineering adapted from Yamaha's exceptional F115, the all-new F90 is able to deliver the perfect mix of refinement and brute power. The new F90 features a new power head displacing 1.8 litres. That's 12.5% greater engine volume than the previous generation F90. Most impressively, 
The new big displacement F90 weighs in close to 10 kilograms lighter. Bigger displacement and lighter weight means more responsive performance. The single overhead camshaft actuating four valves per cylinder allows the F90 to achieve the weight savings of a single camshaft while still delivering the smooth and efficient performance only seen in a 16-valve four-cylinder engine of this size. Precision multi-point fuel injection provides outstanding acceleration and fuel efficiency. The new F90 is driven by genuine Yamaha propellers. This includes a brand new range of aluminium GP series propellers, purpose-built for Yamaha's mid-range engines, featuring Yamaha's exclusive shift dampener system for smooth and quiet shifting and operation. The F90 can also be fitted with Yamaha's award-winning multi-function tiller handle. The F90 utilises Yamaha's variable trolling RPM switch, activated through Yamaha's command link gauges or the multi-function tiller handle, allowing anglers to fine-tune their lure presentation for better fishing. An all-new remote dash-mounted VTS switch is now also available for quick and convenient adjustments on the fly. Additional features incorporated into the new F90 include an improved charging system, generating 35 amps, 40% more than its predecessor, a redesigned long-span mounting system which absorbs vibration for smooth and quiet operation. And like all Yamaha outboards, these new models benefit from one of the most comprehensive corrosion protection systems on the water with engine blocks and heads cast in Yamaha's exclusive marine aluminium alloy, YDC30. And for added peace of mind, the new F90 is YCOP compatible for improved theft protection and security. Dock it and lock it. With the addition of the new F90, not only does Yamaha now have a class-leading outboard motor in each horsepower category, Yamaha also produces the most diverse range of engine platforms within these horsepower categories. Each engine platform has been tailor-made to satisfy the individual requirements of customers and their boats. Within Yamaha's range, there is no need for skippers to compromise when it comes to selecting a power option that's perfect for their boat. Next generation performance. Reliability starts here.
centuries for Australia. Keith, Doreen, Sandy, Brad and Brownie. Over one million centuries for Australia. Over the last year alone. We're 90 years strong and one of the last Australian-made battery manufacturers left standing. Get legendary performance on your side and find out exactly why Australia just loves a century. Have a look at the deck space of the new Quintrex Frontier and you'll have to agree with me that this is the best fishing platform yet produced. But if you think that this amount of deck space and amazing stability, stern to bow, gunnel to gunnel, is proof that this is just a flat water boat, well, take another look. <laughs> The revolutionary apex hull shape that gives the Frontier so much deck space also gives it something much more important for a blue water boating. Amazing stability in any sea you can throw at it. Head sea, following sea, water sea, crossing a bar or beating a southerly buster home. The Frontier's apex hull spreads the chimes to continue its uniquely flared bottom further up the boat than you'd ever get on a traditional deep V design. The bottom plates at its strakes channel the water away and under the boat to give the Frontier racing boat levels of turning ability. And they also make this the driest open boat I've ever taken across a bar. You don't get green water over this bow the way you might be used to in an old-fashioned single pointer. The Frontier's triple point does more than give you extra fishing space forward. It reflects the same advanced design technology that's changing the shape of bigger outside boats around the world. And that's just one of the many added design features that make the Frontier the fishing boat of the future. And back to blue water performance. The Quinney designers would never waste their time putting a grab rail like this on a still water boat. But don't just take my word for it. Call your local Quintrex dealer now to arrange a big sea test run. You'll come back dry and convinced, I guarantee it.
broken smile And I swear I'm not a pretender Sometimes it's love who's the biggest lie So I keep on damning the devil And you keep on saying it's alright Oh glory, I'm a believer Oh Lord, I'm holding tight But wild horses Wild horses Wild horses Run faster Run faster Run faster Run faster Run faster Wild horses Run faster Run faster Run faster So I'll keep on damning the devil And you'll keep on saying it's alright Oh glory, I'm a believer Oh Lord, I'm holding tight But wild horses This is only step one for 2018. Now we've got a 4.6 liter, naturally aspirated, durable, powerful V8 engine that goes up to 300 horsepower.
Steve Miller here with Mercury Marine and I want to talk to you today about one of the coolest parts of our new 90 and 115 four-stroke outboards and that is the fact that we are the only manufacturer to offer not one but two different gear case options to really help you maximize the performance of any specific boat you may have. So we've got our standard gear case which is an all-new gear case design with a very sleek unique hydrodynamic profile to it with 15 percent less hydrodynamic drag which is a fancy way of saying it pushes the boat through the water a lot easier. That will help your cruise speed fuel efficiency it helps your top end and your all-around performance and it's the perfect gear case for those 16 17 foot boats that generally lift very well all by themselves but then for those heavier boats 18 plus foot we've got a larger command thrust gear case we've taken the larger gear case from the 150 four stroke changed the ratio to a nice powerful 2.4 to 1 ratio and put it on the 90 and 115 as an option so now if you've got a boat that's quite a bit heavier has a little trouble lifting itself getting up out of its own way this gear case provides a lot more leverage in the water and a more lift to help get that boat up and moving the way you want it to the other benefit of the command thrust gear case is it gives you access to mercury marine's entire range of v6 class propellers which is unparalleled in the industry so for a standard gear case running a prop such as this black max right here you've got a great prop offering but with the command thrust you can upgrade to something like the inertia, which is a lot more diameter, it's a lot more blade area, and it really complements the larger gear case when you gotta get that boat up and running and to get it to really lift and handle the way you want it to. skiers community around the world and between Australia and England and Belgium um, and the United States there's a pretty good rivalry going on and so uh, we've been looking for the best around the world to ski behind our boats this year and we believe we have the best with us. In the water skiing world this is up there as probably one of one of three or four main races in the world uh, that you want to compete in if you're at the top level. Uh, there's the diamond race in Belgium, the bridge to bridge in Australia and, and the Catalina Island skier races one of the big ones to win if you if you can. Catalina is 26 miles uh, from the back of the Queen Mary and then it's 26 miles back if you're going straight so uh, 52 miles and we're going to be here within 40 minutes. Well the type of boats we're racing today is a, a 42 foot outer limits and a 40 foot hallet. It's a, a 40 footer with Mercury 275s in there and uh, it probably does about 110 miles an hour you know with perfect trim. Oh we've had a lot of uh, close calls in uh, of this race from our skier losing uh, his skag before we're going across the finish line, boat catching on fire, motors busted, so yeah, we've had all kinds of uh, 
crazy stuff happen here. Uh, the water's not forgiving. It's kind of like hitting concrete when you hit it. You uh, skip off it for a while and then, then you dig in. And uh, you know, I've had, I've had a lot of uh, close to your friends of mine killed in this sport. You know, the vibe of the weekend, the skiers, they're nervous, they're in their rooms, they're, uh, you know, they're getting mentally prepared to, you know, at hit speeds over 100 mile an hour. And us drivers and observers were, you know, talking old times, seeing good friends that we haven't seen before from around the world. And so we're having a great time tonight and then uh, wake up in the morning and try and go kick their butt. You know, they had the world's best skiers here today and uh, we had a little bit of a strange motor died right at the start line, couldn't get it fired up so we were a little behind on the start and uh, we just did really well. You know, these are the world's best and uh, we did we did fantastic so we're pretty happy. We had a great start and uh, great in the, where we wanted to be and Daniel did a super job and it was just a good run. We sort of got pinched out a little and dropped the team behind a couple of other boats and then we got a, a good run mid-channel. Got some really good speeds going, and then uh, coming into the island, it always gets a little, little bumpy. And once we made the turn, it was pretty well just dealing with the uh, boat wakes and whatnot from the, from the trip over, and got home as good as we could. One really nice feature of the Elite Ti is on the screen trolling motor control. So basically you have an autopilot when tied into your trolling motor. I can hit the heading lock and it's going to drive me straight ahead. I can speed up, I can turn left, I can turn right. I can also come in and set my speed. So if I don't go 0.8 miles per hour and pull spinners for walleyes, I can set it to do that, it's going to maintain my heading, I can run rods out, and I can, uh, can get ready to fish. I can also anchor from the screen. So I can anchor, I can anchor from here, and now the trolling motor is going to anchor up and stay in one spot. If I decide that, hey, I want to be over there 20 feet, I can just hit the jog right, one, two, three, four, every click is five feet, it's going to move us over. 20 feet, anchor us up, and now we just had a whole nother thing without having to go in and do anything. As you can see, I'm not wearing a necklace. Um, I just do everything from control. If I want to hit standby, I can turn it off. I can also get into doing pre-programmed turns. So if we want to do zigzags, we can come in here and tell it how many legs we want it to do, the distance, and then we can zigzag along an area and a path and have it do that. We can also do one really nice feature is create a custom route. 
So if I want to take and maneuver through this area and kind of zigzag back and forth along these contour lines, all I have to do is hit new route and just touch the screen. And this is where the touch screen becomes really nice because I can take and create my own route. So I'm just gonna call this three mile because that's where we're at. And now that route is on the screen. To navigate that route, all I have to do is touch three mile, start three mile, and I can choose whether I wanna go forward or reverse. So I wanna go forward. It's gonna take me to the start of it. And now it will follow me all the way down this zigzag pattern until I get to the very end. You think ours does that? Uh-uh. Auto stow and deploy, power trim, and your choice of iPilot or iPilot link. Hey. Altera from Minn Kota. We can't believe it either. We need to get one of those. G'day guys, Steve Morgan here for Fishing Monthly Magazines and a beautiful morning at the Gold Coast. And at Fishing Monthly, we love it when motor companies give us a bit of an exclusive preview about some new product which is coming on the market. And in this case, it's Mercury, and they have a new platform of EFI four-stroke 15 and 20 horsepower outboard motors. And uh, what we love doing in Fishing Monthly is comparing the new product with the existing product. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna compare the old Mercury two stroke, which is a 42 kilogram outboard. Um, it burns oil, so it's a bit smoky. Um, it's carburetted and it has a standard tiller on it. It's a great motor that's been around for a long time, very reliable. Historically, uh, all of these tiller outboards have come with the tiller offset to one side and the other. And we've all been taught to drive a boat basically left-handed because that's the most comfortable place uh, for the existing Mercury and for a lot of other outboards on the market. But this, uh, this tiller system uh, can be customized to drive left or right-handed. And let me show you through some of the features of it. Firstly, this nut here adjusts the angle. So if I want to offset this tiller up to 18 degrees on each side, that can be offset. Um, also, the height of the tiller when I'm running can be offset by this knurled knob down here. So if you change the, the height of this knob, the height of that tiller changes. The third thing that we can do is you can actually swap the tiller from left to right handed. It feels right to pull down on that tiller to make the boat go fast. Now that can be swapped over. So if you're gonna drive right handed, that way is acceleration. Um, of course, the gear knob is very big and very uh, very available, and the throttle tension uh, are positioned well. Other cool things about the tiller are the spare uh, kill switch um, actuator at the bottom. So if if you lose this, you have a spare one now. So you can so if you uh, if you lose it, uh, you have an accident on the water, you can pull the spare uh, spare one out, replace it with the uh, with the one that's on the motor, and you're up and going again. Now it seems that recently Mercury's design focus has been all about the end user. Ever since their uh, their 2.1 and 3 litre four strokes in the bigger sizes, uh, it's all been about that end usability and the experience for the user. And uh, it's great to see that design mantra come down to these smaller motors. And some of the pillars that uh, they tout for this product is uh, is great performance, low noise, easy starting, fuel efficiency, and lightweight. And of course, this product here is lighter than the existing Mercury four stroke on the market. Um, um, so we're going to test some of those today. We have two identical boats here, two identical Angler Pros. We have the new Mercury EFI 15 four-stroke tiller on one. We have the older carbide two-stroke Mercury tiller on the other. Let's get them on the water and we're going to run through these one at a time.
So we've had both of these identical Angler Pro tinnies out with the EFI 15 four-stroke Mercury, the new motor, and of course the old carburetted 15 two-stroke. And uh, four-stroke, doesn't burn oil, no smoke, great amenity, nice and quiet, especially at idle. When this thing's one, running wide open throttle, it definitely sounds like a four-stroke. It sounds throaty, it's not necessarily loud, but it has that tone of a big four-stroke. Um, and surprisingly in the drag race, the four-stroke was a bit quicker out of the hole than the carburetted version. The, uh, the two-stroke, it was a little bit quicker in the top end, but this thing is definitely no slouch. It, uh, at 6,400 RPM, it pulled 39 kilometers per hour for a 15 horsepower motor. Um, this motor itself uh, is lighter than that's previ the previous four-stroke 15 in the range. Um, fuel usage for both of them is very, very low, only five or six liters per hour these things use, so that shouldn't be a part of your purchase consideration. Um, this motor is very easy to start. Uh, even that, that batteryless EFI, it's just one pull of the handle. That thing turns over first time every time. Um, Overall, Mercury have kicked some real goals with their last platforms. I love their 3 litre 135 and 150s. Their 75 to 115 2.1 litres are great, and it seems these small EFI uh, 15 and 20 horsepowers have really kicked a goal as well. Imagine I fell off now. <laughs> Colin Cry for hours, dropping peace balls, collecting prayers. Sky that mirrors, sky that stares. Hey guys, Sam here again and today I'm going to run through two new trailers in the Quintrex trailer range. We've got the 1100 here and the 1298 behind me. 
So we'll jump in and run through some of the features. We've got our alloy frame here, which is five millimeters thick, I-beam construction, super heavy duty. Also, we roll these in-house here at the factory to the specific shape that we want, and that also adds a lot of strength to the frame. Then we go onto our four alloy rolled cross members. We roll these again in-house for a nice low boat fit up. So what we want is to get it nice and low, and that helps us keep the height restrictions down. If you've got a tight space to fit the boat and trailer into, also a bit more manageable when you want to get up into the boat. So we'll come around the back here, guys, and as you'll see, the we've got here the hard poly keel rollers. So these are specifically designed for an aluminium boat keel, less susceptible to abrasions, nicks and cuts, which does happen with an alloy keel because they are quite sharp in areas. So we've got the hard poly keel rollers and then you'll see the big difference on this trailer compared to the smaller ones is what we call the easy loader here. So you'll see the, the V-shape or the easy loader here. And what that does is when you come in to drive on and if you are in a windy condition of the boat ramp and the boat's going off to one side and you're trying to stay square, if you come in and you are offline, this will guide you back into the center and then that'll allow you to drive up nice and square. And again, when you come up further, we have the flipper guides here. And what they do is really the same thing as well. If you come offline up further, they'll guide you back into the center and allow you to drive up so you don't have to winch the boat up um, a lot easier, quicker, and safer. Um, also here we've got the long skids, the long um, poly skids here. So these are suited for boats under six meters. They spread the surface area a lot more than a, a roller would. So if you have a light gauge aluminum boat, you want a long skid setup, not a roller, because that can actually damage the bottom of the hull. So you'll find these on anything under, anything up to six meters on our boats. To the moms, to the dads, to the 1970s disco dancer, the 1980s hair bands, and the 1990s punk rocker. To the kids, to the grandpas, to your dad flinging you off a tube and being your best coach, to the first time you dropped a ski, or the first time you dropped a handle, to the first time you ran a full pass, and the last time you will ever barefoot, to the crazy fans in the boat, the blistered hands, the sun-kissed skin, the late night swims, and the campfires with endless snores, to the dogs, the barbecues, the sunsets on the lake, the laughs, the cries. To your water sports lifestyle, we are the brand that has been there since the beginning. Do they even make a high-end ski anymore? I thought they just made tubes. Aren't these skis manufactured in China? This is Ed. Ed has hand-built skis for Connolly for 30 years in Linwood, Washington. This is Doug. Doug is smart. He has engineered products for Connolly for 25 years. Together, they have changed the industry more than any other engineering team. They've been working together twice as long as some companies have been in business. Some things they have brought to the industry you may recognize. Hinge Tech Wakeboard Boots, Shaped Slalom Skis, Stokes Tip Jumpers, Lycra Wakeboard Boots, Honeycomb Core Wakeboard, 6-inch Wakeboard Plate. Doug even has a burrito named after him. Coated main lines, top shaping on skis, leather grip chamois hand, feet technology on bottom of ski. The only U.S. manufacturing facility producing compression molded skis, wakeboards, and wake surfers. We are wakeboards. We are tubes. We are skis. We are wake surfers. We love water sports so much, we even made you a f***ing pool float. We are Connolly. We've been making your summer better for 52 years, and we aren't about to stop.
Jack Clark, slings out in front of the boat. Let's go with the rope. He's coming by us. He's coming right beside us. There he is. Oh, oh shit. to put a foot down so he didn't go over the jump ramp. We're with Robin Singer, who's out from uh, Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, to tell us Aussies about this Pro XS version of the new 4.6 litre V8 platform. And Robin, you're pretty excited about this motor. You live and you breathe it, but I'm excited about the Pro XS because this thing is built for performance. Can you tell me the differences between the standard motor and this Pro XS? Well, uh, first of all, it's all about the power and the torque. That's really what it is, and that's why it's a V8 and that, that type of displacement. You know, and some of the things we did, because this is really performance, whether it's on the back of a bass boat, a bay boat, you know, you see it in all segments. So we, we had to be careful about the weight. Uh, we had a customer that's moving from the two-stroke technology into the four-stroke. So obviously, I'm concerned about weight. Obviously, I got to make sure I got the power, and, and obviously, the look right there, is, you know, tells it all. So what we did is that when you look at the, the actual package itself, we did some things in the, in the actual cowling. We reduced about three grams right there just in the resins and the different materials. And the gear case that we run on the performance model is called the Torque Master. 
Torque Master 2, it's a surface penetrating type lower unit. It does three things, fast, 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 <laughs> okay? And what that does, we took about uh, another seven off there. So that's why we've been able to keep the weight the same as the, the DFI two stroke. So now it's about torque. And the torque on the engine now, being a V8, it has a very flat power curve, very strong on it. So the more air we pump in, you know, the more power we make. So from there then, you compare that to the two-stroke technology, always been strong. The Pro XS Opti has always been strong, but now we deliver about 10% more torque. We did things where we added what's called transient spark. And, and that's what really makes this thing an animal when it gets it up on top to get it going. So think of transient spark as what I'm trying to do is, it's a device that's on the engine that when I go to full throttle, the engine's being told, hey, get me up on top, let's get this thing going. So it gives you more spark advance, gives you more fuel, you know, and once it gets up and you're going, now it says, hey, I did my job, I'm going back into my fixed mode. It's about fuel economy, efficiency, and so on. So it's the best of all worlds. It's about power, power to get it up, power to let it sound off. Then it's still about a fuel economy, easy in the pocketbook and you got to look, you'll be the king of the dock. And look, it is a bad boy, because this is the motor that killed the Pro XS 225 Optimax, isn't it? That's right, <laughs> yep. And, and the, the customers are gonna enjoy this. There'll be a seamless transition. In fact, uh, we had many uh, of the hardcore bass anglers uh, back in the US that actually came to run the product, and that was it. It did die a quick death. Uh, long live the new V8. Well, there's only one more thing to do, and that's to start this bad boy up. Let's hit it. Oh yeah, that sounds bad. Man, talk about an active ocean right now. There's life here now, I'll tell you. Tom and I have been using the XI5 motor guide trolling motor for about three years now and it has revolutionized the way we fish. It's super quiet, the GPS um, anchor mode just, just locks down precision anywhere we go. Uh, just been a phenomenal motor. Well, motor guide just came out with the new XI3. This is the newest version. Um, it's a little more compact, a little lighter, and uh, designed specifically for the smaller skiffs and small bay boats. Just like the XI5, the XI3 has all the different modes on it. It's got the anchor mode. You can get it with or without GPS. Um, the, the without the GPS is, is a lot less expensive, so that's one advantage is the cost. With the GPS, he does everything the XI5 does. It goes in a straight line. You can put in uh, uh, different waypoints and stuff to go to. Um, really phenomenal motor, does everything we want it to do.